Hey guys, CB Super. Today I got five tips on where to go to find more DaVinci Resolve or DaVinci Resolve Fusion training for you. So my first tip here is actually just to go to the blackmagicdesign.com website. They have a section devoted to training for using DaVinci Resolve and the link will be down in the description. So once you go to that link, there's a whole section here that has nothing but DaVinci Resolve training. You can become a certified DaVinci Resolve professional if you want. There's a bunch of courses that you can take. There's several training videos, several downloadable books on learning DaVinci Resolve all kinds of different references and resources for you. You can even download the beginner's guide to DaVinci Resolve. There's color correction, fair light, and of course the fusion visual effects guide. So this is probably my favorite, but I am a little bit biased. So this is probably the first place I would go if I wanted to learn fusion or learn DaVinci Resolve. My second tip is to just come over to the stakeunderwater.com. We suck less forums. Now, again, link is gonna be down below, but if you sign up and it's absolutely free, you can check out all of their forums. You can leave questions and comments and you could answer other people's questions if you want. Pretty much this is one of the first places when I have a problem that I will go in order to hopefully figure that out. My third tip is actually just the DaVinci Resolve reference manual. It's about 3,200 pages long, but it has a really nice search function. Let's say you just want to learn how to use the spherical camera. Well, you just come down to the Fusion page effects, come down to 3D nodes, and you can hit spherical camera. You'll notice that it's broken up into actual node areas. So there's fuses, there's input output, there's LUTs, there's mask nodes. Let's say I want to learn how to use the bitmap node. I can either come down to the bitmap section or I can come up to the search bar and just type in bitmap and then it's going to pull up articles inside of that manual that use the word bitmap. So you may learn things that aren't even in the fusion section but they pertain to the bitmap node. So this is a really powerful reference and it's usually my first go-to when I'm actually trying to make a tutorial and I want to make sure that everything that I'm giving you guys is somewhat correct. So my fourth tip is actually just to come to my website, the cbsuper.com website. I've just recently updated it and it's still a work in progress, but you'll notice that I now have a training tab and under the training tab, there's CB Fusion Tools, Fusion Basics, Fusion Nodes, and Fusion Techniques. Now, if we just go over to the training tab, we'll see that there's only four sections now. There's obviously going to be more sections in the future and each one of these sections takes you to a different learning avenue. The first one is Fusion Basics. We can just come over to Fusion Basics and this is where all of my beginner videos are going to be listed. So you'll be able to access Fusion Basics inside of my website. Now there's also going to be blog posts and all kinds of other reference materials that are gonna be inside of each one of these training sections. But just know that this is definitely a work in progress and it's gonna take me a few weeks to probably a few months to get it all set up. So my fifth and final tip is actually to use other people's Fusion Comps. So recently I picked up this free lower thirds pack from Gargoyles at work. They're very professional, they're very clean, and they're actually really great. In order to get a set for yourself, all you gotta do is come over here to Gargoyles at work, go ahead and give them a subscribe, hit that like button, and make sure to download the actual link. There is a video made by John's Films, so if you're not familiar with John's Films, he has tons of DaVinci Resolve, benchmark, tutorial, and video editing videos on his site. If you found my page, then you probably have already found John's Films, but whenever I have a problem with any kind Kind of technical aspect of computers dealing with DaVinci Resolve, I'll usually push them over to John's film. So again, just go subscribe, just make your life a little bit easier. So he has a video showing you how to actually download and make everything work on your computer. There is a couple fonts that you're gonna need to download, but once you do that, they work pretty well. But my fifth tip isn't actually using those lower thirds we can actually learn a lot from them as well. So let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna bring a brand new Fusion Comp down on my timeline and jump over to Fusion. What I wanna do is inside of his Avalon file, he actually has the edit titles, which is great, but I'm more interested in these Fusion Comp files. So he has each one of these titles in a text file. Now, if I take this text file, I can't just drop it onto my node panel, not gonna do anything, but it's really simple to actually make it work. All I gotta do is come into the actual text itself, double click in here so I can edit the text, and then I'm just gonna remove the .txt, and I'm just gonna type in .setting, just like that. And now it's gonna ask me, do I wanna change the extension from .txt to .setting? Of course I do, that's why I did it. I don't know why you're asking me. And then just grab that .settings file and drop it right onto your node panel. 
So let's go ahead and plug this into the media out and we'll notice something straight away. So DaVinci has a bug for whatever reason that when you import a custom font that was not originally with DaVinci, for some reason, it doesn't want to show up. Even though I have the font, I've already downloaded it you don't get to see it. So what you have to do is you actually have to pick a different font and then come back in and then go back to that font and then you'll be able to see the font correctly. So we got to do that with text one and text two for this specific font. We can just either go to Monaco or something and then go back to Montserrat. All right, now we can actually see this work live and we can see how he actually built that. And that's what's important because if we come over here to each one of these individual nodes, we can actually see how he animated it. By clicking on the mask and then coming over to the spline editor, we can actually see what kind of animation he used. So we can see that he definitely eased this in and eased it out. And we can change that animation if we want. Maybe we want it to be a little bit more like this. We can come in here and we can play around with it and we can see the difference that that makes. So now it's gonna go out a little bit faster and then it's gonna ease in. So that's definitely one way that we can learn about how to animate and we can take a look at all of his structures. We can always look and see exactly what this is. This is just a mask that is being piped into a line, which the line, we know what that is. That's just a background. And let's say we wanna change the color of the background. We already know how to do that because we have been through my masking video. So we already understand how all of that works. He used a keyframe stretcher so that you can actually stretch it out and it'll still keep somewhat of a timing. You, we can see that it stretches from frame 60 to 120. So that's the area that it'll be stretching from. This is probably a global transform and we can go ahead and size that up and down. So one thing to note is that you can see he has a pivot point over here in the corner. So it's going to size up and down from that pivot point. So we've learned quite a bit just by looking at his fusion comps and there's 20 different fusion comps to actually look into. So if you're interested in learning how to make your own lower thirds pack or you're just interested in motion graphics in general, this might be a really great resource for you. So you can head over to Gargoyles at work and you can go ahead and download it for free if you want. All right, well, that's been five tips on how to learn how to use the Fusion page inside of DaVinci Resolve. If you guys have any questions on anything we went over today, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.